Hi friends, welcome back to Discovering the Age of Adventist Gallery, subject number two. What is a portrait? A real simple answer to what is a portrait is this right here. It's a painting or a photograph that shows the person. Either the person might be in full length, in three quarter length, just their face, from one side, another side, even from behind. Sometimes portraits also include other people. So it could be a portrait of the Stefanidis family or a portrait of a couple. There's lots of different kinds of portraits. Now portraits are very important in the history of art and generally in history. And one reason is because it represented what somebody looked like before cameras existed. So for example, Say a king from one country was going to marry a queen from another country. A lot of times, because traveling was very difficult then, they never would have met. So to know what their future husband or wife would look like, a portrait would be sent to them. You can see how a lot of confusing and interesting stories could come out of that. Now, the Age of Adventist Gallery has lots and lots of portraits in its various collections different styles of portraits, different themes of portraits, and we're going to take a look at all of these. Also, other than seeing them on this video, the Age of Adventist Gallery is now open, so you can come with your family and check these all out up close and personal. big variety of portraits. I'm sure you realize that there's more to a portrait than just what meets the eye. And there's lots and lots of things that you can discover when you look at a portrait. So for example, you might be able to discover, looking closely at the eyes and at the mouth and the cheeks, if somebody looks happy or sad. You might be able to realize what period of time the painting was in, was created in, depending on the kind of clothes that they were wearing. You also might be able to know if they were a rich person or a poor person, if they were going to a party or if they were going out to rake leaves. Usually though, people did choose to wear their best every time they would have a portrait of themselves painted. So you just saw a close-up version of this portrait. Do you have any idea 
how he might have been feeling, what he might have been thinking when he was sitting for this portrait. So this boy, this young boy's name was Claude, and he was the son of a famous, 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 famous painter called Renoir. Renoir, his father, is actually the painter of this portrait here. Now in this, I don't know whether you noticed this, he is wearing something that looks kind of like a clown outfit. It's quite a traditional version of a clown outfit that you would find um, in Italy. He has this huge white collar and then this red sort of loose kind of shirt. Now we are very lucky because Claude Renoir, who was called Coco, that was his nickname, actually wrote a story, he wrote in his memoirs, the story behind this painting. So how he felt in the context of being painted by his father. Now let's have a little read. I remember the traumatic moments that marked the final sittings for my portrait as a red clown. I must have been nine or ten. The costume was complemented by a pair of white tights which I obstinately refused to wear. In order to finish the canvas, my father demanded I put on the tights. But there was nothing to be done. They itched. So then my mother brought a pair of silk tights. They tickled. Threats were made, followed by negotiations. I was alternately promised a spanking, an electric train, boarding school, and a box of oil paints. Finally, I consented to wear cotton tights for a few moments. My father, containing his rage but close to exploding, finished the painting despite the contortions I carried out so as to be able to scratch myself. So, as we can see, he doesn't seem like he was particularly happy um, having his portrait painted. Now, what about you guys? Would you like to have your portrait painted? What would you want to wear? What do you think would represent you? Let's have a little think and we'll be right back. Nowadays, one of the most common forms of a portrait is a selfie. And people take selfies all the time. And a lot of times a selfie, or the idea of it, is to capture a specific emotion. So you might take a selfie showing that you're angry, take a selfie showing that you're happy, take a selfie with something wonderful behind you. So there's a lot of things, again, that can be hidden behind the selfies. Now I took a few of mine, we're going to take a look at them and see if we can figure out what I'm feeling in each one of the selfies. Let's take a look. Now we're done with our small little introduction um, into portraits and we will go to the Renoir's workshop so that we can make our own exciting and unique portrait. Let's go. Hi friends, welcome to Renoir's workshop. Today, we are going to do our own portrait, or rather, our own self-portrait, which is basically the difference between a portrait and a self-portrait, is that in a self-portrait, you're painting yourself. Kind of like the selfies we were talking about before, rather than just a photo of some. Now, in the old days, when there weren't cameras, people used to take, uh, people used to make their own portraits basically using a mirror. So they would sort of prop it up here, look at themselves, and then copy the, the various characteristics according to what they wanted to show. Now we are going to make a very special kind of um, self-portrait today using the technique of collage. And we're going to do it by using a lot of different kinds of materials. The main most important part is having 
picker from magazines because that gives you a lot of color, a lot of choice. It's something that's really easily found. But also any kind of scrap material you might find. Here we've got some sequins. You might have some beads. You might have use some pasta. I think we've even got, yes we do, some feathers, which you might have left over if you did our previous activity. And then you need something to actually do the drawing part. And that's where I'm going to use colored pencils, but you could use any sort of medium you want. So you could use um, paints, you could use um, markers, you can use anything you want. Now the other thing that we did was take a photo of ourselves. So if you have a printer, you can do this as well and print it out. So I kind of a close-up photo where you can see your characteristics. I did it in different sizes. Now this is so that I could cut different characteristics of my face in different sizes for us to do a very special and unique portrait. And I will tell you all about it in a bit. So now we're getting started. We have our A3 piece of cardboard and we have our facial features cut out in different sizes. Now what you could do is you could take a pencil and draw kind of um, a face if you wanted, and then shoulders to use as a kind of beginning. But what I did was I had my hair down, so I cut that out to give me the, the outline. So what I would do is I would stick that about there and then where you can see, sort of do the, the shoulders like that. And kind of be free with this. It just basically needs to look like a, a person. And then, so we've got them there here. And then you can start off with your facial features. And then you can choose. So like, I like the idea of having a really big smile. So we've got the bigger size of the smile. And then we've got our eyes, so we could have a big eye. Let's see, maybe with a small eye. Depends on your mood. You can put all of the facial features if you want. Now, if you want to make it look realistic, here is a tip that I remember learning in art school. What you can do is you take a line, and you draw it through the face like that, and then another one through the middle. And that is actually where the eyes are supposed to be on the face, even though it might seem weird like that. But again, we're not trying to do something realistic. We're just trying to do something fun that kind of expresses ourselves with the various materials that we use. So now we're going to start gluing them on. Um, we had taken a look before doing the outline and choosing some of the facial characteristics. Now I have finished my portrait. So I added some material here at the bottom. It's for my dress. And then I found some things that I liked to post on it. So there's like some butterflies a bag, a nice piece of jewelry, lots of color. And I think a lot of people would think this looks like me or sort of gives off my energy with the, with the hearts and the smile. So um, I hope you enjoyed making your portrait and you enjoyed um, today's mini discovery um, and creative exercise. And we will see you very soon. Bye.